From Fox 8 Sports, this is the Overtime Podcast. From the Fox 8 Studios in New Orleans, this is the Fox 8 Overtime Podcast. I am your host, Sean Fazan. Sitting next to me, as always, Andre Johnson Jr. Woo. Remember that. Remember to add the Please junior. Please add the junior. And Andre, today we are back in the lab, back in the podcast studio for a third day in a row, fourth day <laughs> this week, but that's just what we do when the news pops. So we have a big show Today, on this Friday, as you get closer and closer into your weekend, and if you're in your war in New Orleans, you're probably thinking of the first weekend of parades, but let's just mm-hmm. get into a little bit of Saints news before you go and enjoy the festivities. But before we do that, be sure to like, share, rate, review. If you are watching us on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to this channel. The bell notification goes off. You know when we have a new video uploaded. So... Andre, I pulled you back in on your off day for about an hour here, so I appreciate that. But the news was big enough to get to the Saints have finally made a decision or made a move or getting closer to a move to arguably their biggest hire or biggest decision of the offseason. And that's where we're going to start our big picture. Why don't you take it from there? You know, Sean, it's been the question that we've been talking about on every podcast since Mm -hmm. I joined up. Who are the Saints going to hire at offensive coordinator? And Mm -hmm. they finally made that decision. Clint Kubiak, the passing game coordinator for the San Francisco 49ers. Now, obviously, the 49ers in the Super Bowl, the 49ers Mm -hmm. with the fourth-ranked passing offense in the NFL this season. So Kubiak's been doing pretty darn good at his job, Sean. When you got the news, did you like the hire? And this is our obvious big-picture item today because we have been talking about this, speculating about this. You know, got to the point where we were just like, okay, when's this thing going to happen? But look, over the last five or six days, this was the name that had really emerged Mm -hmm. as this is the leader in the clubhouse for the Saints. Who knows where he was on the list all along when the search began. But really, let's be let's be frank here. This is a very good hire from a name perspective, from what you needed uh, from an offensive perspective. First, real bit of positive momentum from Dennis Allen and the Saints organization this offseason, and my goodness, did they need it. Um, Like I said, this was the name as the search took its twists and its turns, and once we got into Wednesday of this week, Thursday of this week, and Friday today of this week, like I said, clearly Kubiak had become the most popular name because some other popular names that we all liked, like Zach Robinson, had sort of fallen off, and Gerard Johnson right. decided to stay uh, where he was at. And um, we, 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 I didn't say Zach Robinson fell, fell off. He, he went and joined uh, another organization. So as you got drifted it, later and later into the week and new names started to emerge, you started to see the new names that were emerging didn't necessarily fit the Shanahan, McVay, Kubiak system. And I say Kubiak because Shanahan, the oldest Shanahan, and Kubiak were hand-in-hand forever. Right. Uh, Clint uh, Kubiak's dad. So he's a 49ers guy. He's a Shanahan guy. Um, these are the guys that are coveted around the league. And for very good reason, these offenses are, are they're great. I mean, they're great. Uh, great offenses. And um, it was very clear that that was the style that they wanted to go and get. And they did their due diligence. Dan Pitcher was another one. Ended up staying, obviously, um, in Cincinnati. Could you imagine, though, if they would have gone throughout this entire process, however long it's been? I don't know. How, how many days has it been? It feels like it's been a long time. It feels like it's been weeks. It would have been such a letdown to go through all of this and not land someone from that tree where it was so obvious that's the way they wanted to go. It really would have felt like whoever that would have been. And there's still some talented guys that aren't necessarily from the Shanahan tree that probably could have come in here and done some things. But th- this probably... It, it prob- if that would have happened, it probably would have felt like settling. To me, this is exactly what you needed to get the curiosity back from the fan base that has started to lose patience, yeah. lose interest in some regard, and just lose faith. This is a nice little pivot back in the positive direction. I like that he's young, but not too young. 36 years old, got some really good experience. I like that he's worked with... Kirk Cousins, yep. I guess one year Russell Wilson. I don't know how, how you want to view that. That was a disaster. And obviously Brock Purdy, who's doing something we have never seen done, obviously, in the NFL right now as they get prepared for the 
Super Bowl. I like the lineage, the Shanahan, Kubiak, and McVay, all that stuff. And I like that the Saints kind of set out to find this, had some competition for other teams that wanted services from this type of offense. And at least according to ESPN, they're quote unquote working to hire Clint Kubiak. And it looks like it would be a, it would be such a letdown if they didn't, but it looks like they're gonna get their guy. So to me, that's a that, hey, nice job, DA. Like, nice job. And look, we, we've been on him all season, all off season. Uh, we have criticized and praised and criticized more his every move, his every mistake, and it, from big picture to the small details. But look, give him credit here. This yeah. is not – he had to go out as a defensive coach and find his guy from a specific tree and battle other teams to get this person. Now, it can't become official until – at the Super Bowl, according to, to league rules, I guess, or right. whatever the case may be because they're playing. I tried to check with a few Saints guys, get it confirmed. They said we can't say anything, so take that for what it's worth. But look, man, I think this is a great hire. Look look at the – look at the – the, the, the landing, first off, he was from 19 to through, 19 through 21. 19 and 20, he was a quarterback coach in Minnesota. Right. 21, he was the OC. Um, la, uh, 2022, he was with Denver. Yeah, that was a disaster. That was a Nathaniel Hackett disaster. And then this yeah. year, he was with San Francisco. He is the passing game specialist. They have the fourth-ranked passing offense, number two total offense, number three rushing offense, and number three scoring offense in the NFL this year for the 49ers. When he played with Minnesota, or when he coached in Minnesota, number 14 scoring offense, number 11 passing offense, looks like number 12 here total offense, 17 rushing offense. But And look, when he was offensive coordinator in Minnesota, another thing to note, the fewest turnovers in the league. That's outstanding. And also, Kirk Cousins had his two highest seasons of passing touchdowns. The, the the only year he was coordinator and the last year he was quarterback's coach, that was 20 and 21. So he had Kirk Cousins had careers, career highs in passing touchdowns in two of the three seasons. Kubiak was with him in Minnesota. So, hey, I know all y'all out there are not DA fans, but give the man his credit here. He set out to get a guy. Looks like he's going to land that guy. And it's exactly what we all said they needed. Young, fresh innovative ideas going to be a lot of motion a lot of stretch zone a lot of bootleg but to me this is a cause for optimism if you're a saints fan right now because and it had it's it just had to happen absolutely and if you talk about the average mm -hmm. saints fan if they were to write a wish list down sean mm -hmm. of what they wanted to see from this offense over the last few years at the top or near the top of every single one of y'all lists mm -hmm. would have been creativity yep. it's something that you hear saints fans complain about and rightfully so this offense has looked stale a lot of times, and at the very minimum, you know that anybody from that Shanahan tree is going to bring a certain level of creativity. You mentioned the quarterbacks he worked with before he went to Minnesota. He was offensive assistant with uh, under his dad in Denver. Mm -hmm. So we've seen him work with young quarterbacks like Trevor Simeon and like Brock Purdy that he's working with now. We've seen him work with veterans like yep. Kirk Cousins. And like you said, the Denver thing didn't go well, but he still was able to work with a Russell Wilson, which will come in handy being around Kirk, being around Russ. Mm -hmm. Now you're around another veteran in Derek Carr. If one day, let's say the Saints one day decide to go younger at quarterback, draft the quarterback and ride with him, well, we've seen him be great for young quarterbacks. We see what he's doing with Mr. Irrelevant now and Brock Purdy in San Francisco and the success that that offense has had under him. Yeah, and I just I love the infrastructure over there in San Francisco. It just seems like it's a well-oiled machine. I mean, you had to be all in organizationally to make that incredible, incredibly courageous decision to say, nah, I'm not going to start the number three overall pick. Instead, I'm going to go with Mystery Relevant right. because he, he finished the season off pretty well. And we just kind of believe in this guy a little bit more. And they were not going to be denied. And look at the numbers. The numbers bear itself out. They're in the Super Bowl right now. I, I don't care what you think about Brock Purdy. That ain't supposed to happen. That it's is not. not supposed to happen with Mystery Relevant and Super Bowl starting in a Super Bowl. That is not supposed to happen. It's certainly not supposed to happen when the year before they traded up to be the number what number three overall yep, number pick three. to get a player. Trey so, Lance. Um, so I like that Kubiak has been around that. I know he doesn't call plays, but he's gonna get his, his shot to call plays here. He didn't call plays in San Francisco. He called plays in Minnesota. So he he's did. got a little bit of everything while still being a young coach. So checks all the boxes as far as I'm concerned. Um, right, and to be clear. You may ask, you know, if he was so good in Minnesota, why was he only there as offensive coordinator for one season? 
that wasn't necessarily a him thing. They brought in a new head coach yeah. in Minnesota in 2022. A lot of times you bring in a new head coach. That head coach wants his guys. Yeah. That's why he was out in Minnesota. But he did do the play calling in 2021. Like you said, 11th in passing offense, 14th in scoring offense, fewest turnovers in the league. I like that. That's a great That's a great note. And that and was his first year calling plays. First year calling plays. That's solid. And he played with a veteran, in my opinion, has always been the same sort of tier of quarterback and Kirk Cousins, and now right. he has Derek Carr, which I think some similarities th- there, there are some similarities sure. in terms of where they kind of rank in the hierarchy of the NFL. I think Cousins has had a little bit more success if you add it up overall just in terms of wins and losses and playoffs and that sort of thing. But I think overall when you rank those guys, they generally fall in that same sort of uh, hierarchy, or same sort of level in the NFL. So, look, man, I, I like this hire a lot. And like I said before, they needed this because it was it's going it was going to be a tough off season regardless of given all the it's kind of the leftover funk from the season where they didn't get to where they wanted to go and it's just been a little bit awkward in terms of letting coordinator Pete Carmichael go and, and kind of the weird press conference with Mickey Loomis and you know we're out the Senior Bowl it's fine but it, it it something needed to kind of pivot in the right direction this is certainly something that I felt like pivoted in the right direction so I can't say anything else other than. Job well done, D.A. and Mickey Loomis and the New Orleans Saints, because I think Clint Kubiak, you needed a name. And regardless of what you think of what's happening around with, with this coaching staff or with this head coach, he went and got a name, and we'll see if it works out. Absolutely, and you've seen Mike LaFleur come from that Shanahan tree. Mm-hmm. You've seen Mike McDaniel, who's tearing it up in Miami Absolutely. right now, come from that Shanahan tree. And something interesting. The other day you talked to Drew Brees. Yeah. And Drew Brees was talking about some of the evolutions that happened in the offense in his latter years in Mm -hmm. New Orleans. And one of the names that he picked out that the Saints stole some things from. I'm not saying stole. Mm -hmm. Drew Brees said stole. It's a copycat (laughs) offense, you know. So one of the things that they watched and took from was the Shanahan system. So, you know, as a Saints fan, you might be seeing a little bit of what you saw back then. It might start looking like the days where Saints fans love turning their TVs on at noon to see what the Saints were about to do on offense, how many points they were going to score. It could be a very nostalgic hire in a way. It, nostalgic in terms of the success of having a top 10 offense, yes. but also refreshing and new in terms of maybe a little bit newer refreshed forms of ideas on the field that had gotten stale over the last really since breeze retired and probably the last year of breeze they were they were doing some things as well so it's it, it's been a while since you've seen a prolific offense here and even though this year they kind of finished i think they finished 14th yeah in, it was uh, off, they had the, they had offense. certain areas where they were good but it was kind of up and down all year but which brings us to our next point andre and that's this you know who benefits the most from this hire individually as players well i look at san francisco i look who they've i look who kubiak has worked with not just there but in you know wherever he's gone and you know i can't help but look at san francisco and look what they did to re i don't want to say revive you're a carolina panthers fan unbelievably he's a carolina panthers fan but not you're, a lot of happiness yeah, uh, over here in but, carolina there, there's nothing to cheer for. but one of your i'm sure <laughs> one of your one of your guys before he got traded was christian mccaffrey Absolutely. and you know carolina kind of felt like he had got caught in that that injury funk, kind of mm-hmm. half available, half not. All of a sudden, he gets traded. I don't want to say they revived his career, but it certainly feels like they've added on to his career. Like he looks like, he's I mean, he looks like he, he looks like he's playing the best football of his career. So Christian McCaffrey has always been so closely compared to Alvin Kamara, right. same draft class. If he could do that with Alvin here, maybe there is a chance Alvin is back after all. Because you know this offense, this creative run game, this. Uh, how they utilize the backs and their blocking schemes and what they do off the 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 the, the run game and how much they like running backs that can catch the ball in the backfield. Maybe this could be a chance for a little bit of a career revival for Alvin Kamara. Who knows? Absolutely. And he's certainly not old. And another player who I think would greatly benefit, Chris Olave. You okay. look, we talked about the quarterbacks that, you know, he's coached, but let's talk about some of the receivers. Justin Jefferson, yeah. one of his best career years when he was in charge of that offense. Jerry Judy, there weren't a lot of good things about that Denver but offense, he was but one of Jerry them. Judy was one of the few bright spots that season. Right now, Ayuk, what Brandon Ayuk is doing in San Francisco, he's having a career year. All of that while Clint Kubiak is in charge of the offense. So 
having Chris Olave, somebody who's got the speed, somebody who's got the route running, somebody who, you know, hasn't exactly been used in the optimal way, having somebody who we've seen elevate talented wide receivers. And Chris Olave, there's no doubt about it. He is a talented wide receiver. I think we could see Chris Olave have a career year. Absolutely. I think that's certainly possible. And I'll throw another name out there. As if he's not versatile enough, you're going right. with a guy that comes from a versatile scheme who's, who's dealt with guys like Christian McCaffrey, who's very versatile, dealt with guys like Debo Samuel, who's very versatile. versatile. Well, you got Taysom Hill. I mean, think about what he could do with a guy like that with versatility and creativity and how you can scheme something up with that type of skill set from from Taysom Hill who you can add the throwing element to it as well yep. so I think that's another one that could greatly benefit from a creative mind like this and of course the obvious one is Derek Carr because they wouldn't have made this move they didn't feel like they were getting the most out of Derek Carr it's going to be a new system for Derek Carr but generally speaking these are systems where quarterbacks can thrive in because it's not quite as I don't, I don't want to say complicated but it just it just feels like it's that the, the it, there's a clearer vision for the quarterback on every play because of the, speci the specificity of the play design. So I think Derek Carr, Kamara, Taysom Hill, you said Olave. I mean, all these guys, all of a sudden, you could be looking at some players that yeah, could really benefit from this change. And I would even throw in one more name, Rashid Shahid. Okay. Because we've seen Rashid Shahid have some success in the end-around game. You know, when you move mm -hmm. him in motion. That when jet you sweep can game, use, too. Yeah, uh, Shahid creatively, we've seen Shahid have success. Matter of fact, his breakout game last season, one of the touchdowns he scored was on mm -hmm. an end around. You I think know, it was the first touchdown he scored. It was. I think I believe it was against the Cardinals in Arizona, if I remember correctly. Okay. I know he had a deep touchdown pass there too, but I think Rashid Shahid, when you talk about a coordinator who's going to move him around, and he's the guy who you want moving around, who you can put in the slot, move, a, move him around. He, they might even motion him into the backfield. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of play caller that we're talking about here, and I think Shahid, Olave, you mentioned AK. I can't even dream of what they could pull out the bag with Taysom Hill. I think this offense is going to be very exciting to watch next season. Yeah, and so if you're when you are watching the Super Bowl on Super Bowl Sunday, if you're not out at all the parades, uh, Super Bowl Sunday that will be the Toth and Bacchus uh, Sunday of yeah. Mardi Gras. So if you manage to get back in front of a TV set and watch the Super Bowl, now you have a new reason to watch if you're a Saints fan because now you get an up close and personal look at what could potentially coming to New Orleans. Uh, offense to the Saints offense in 2024 and I think for Kubiak it's a it's a great opportunity it's his own show again with a veteran quarterback and if he revives this offense he's the hero maybe he's up for a head coaching job maybe you only get him one year but you know what right. if you only get him for one year that means he did something really good when he was here and everybody would benefit and everybody would certainly um, appreciate those efforts but we're getting a little ahead of ourselves but nonetheless all in all I think we'll close with this job well done Good hire. And I think Clint Kubiak was the name when it, when everything kind of settled that they needed to get, and they got him. So good for DA, good for the Saints. They did. They got their guy. And, you know, he's been a part of – we talked about the 2016 Denver Broncos, the team that the first job he had as offensive assistant under his dad. That was a team fresh off a of Super Bowl. Yeah. So he's played teams with – he's coached on teams with expectations. He's coached in Minnesota, a team that's been to the playoffs, a team that's been down a little bit. He coached in Denver, a team that had some rough times. He's coaching in San Francisco, a team that's been in the Super Bowl right now. So we've seen him kind of up, down. He's been a part of every single team. So what he's walking to in New Orleans, I don't think that'll overwhelm him because he's seen it all in his brief time in the league. Should be fun. Should be a great um, next couple of months and couple of uh, – once you get into OTAs and maybe you start seeing a few little things, a few little wrinkles, be curious to see uh, how it all looks. We have a, uh, we'll have a new sort of uh, sort of fresh storyline, I guess, if you will, just to see how how things certainly look as we get into the offseason program in a couple of months. And we'll see how this um, changes current coaching staff members. If it yeah. does, if there's a there's a if there, is there a need to tweak the offensive line approach? Is there a need to look in other positions uh, be, with a new coordinator? I don't know, but. I do know this. The Saints got their guy in Clint Kubiak. So we're going to close things out here today. You can go back to your off day, sir. I will oh, get I into will. the weekend as well. And um, be sure to check out the po Fox 8 Overtime podcast. We'll be back on Monday. But for now, we'll see you guys next time on Overtime.